Attack on Titan, Death Note. Dragon Ball Evolution. All absolutely steaming piles of trash. But finally, we have a great anime live action adaptation to enjoy. So let's talk about Otakoi and a few things that it does really well compared to a lot of other live action anime adaptations. Otakoi, Love is Hard for Otaku. The movie version finally came out here in Japan on February 7th, and let me tell you, it's been crushing at the box office. Just on the opening weekend, it packed away about 300 million yen, and according to ega.com, it's actually tracking to cross 1.5 billion during its run. For those who are not familiar with the series, it was originally a web manga series that was launched on Pixiv, kind of like, you know, all good things are. And uh, it actually ended up getting a physical manga adaptation as well as an anime adaptation in 2018. And finally, 2020, we have this pretty cool movie to check out. It's basically a love comedy about four different types of otaku and how they navigate these relationships with one another and how being such big otaku really changes the way that they interact with the world and with each other. As far as the characters go, we have Narumi. She's basically a Fujoshi otaku who keeps her love for otome games and idols and so on under wraps because she's very afraid of being ostracized at her company. We have Hirotaka who is a game otaku and happens to be Narumi's childhood friend and also, as it turns out, her co-worker at Rockets Inc. And unlike Narumi, he doesn't keep his hobby in the closet. He doesn't care if uh, people know he's a game otaku. He really just doesn't care at all and it's quite wonderful. Then we have Hanako, a famous cosplayer who keeps her identity under wraps and happens to be Narumi's senior at the company. And Taro, who is a more casual kind of otaku and he's into the sort of shonen type stuff and bishoujo comics and so on. They're all super interesting characters in their own way and there are two other characters who are important in the manga and anime but we're not going to get into those because they don't actually make it into the movie. More on that in a bit. So the original Otakoi was really fun. I really enjoyed it quite a bit. And so I was super excited the other day when I was just browsing, looking for a movie, and whoa, this pops up. Why not go check it out? But of course, uh, although it did pique my interest, I was a bit worried because as we all know, anime live action adaptations usually suck. But I thought I'd go for a quick laugh and I wasn't expecting anything really great, but I also knew it wouldn't be able to surpass levels of shittiness of something like Attack on Titan or the Netflix Death Note piece of trash. And to be honest, I was actually very pleasantly surprised with the movie. It's pretty awesome. So here are three things that I thought really separated the movie from a lot of other very spectacularly crappy live action anime adaptations. Firstly, it's a musical. And I must say, I was like, what the heck? This is a musical when I was in the theater because I went into this not knowing anything about the movie. And then they started off the movie with this really awesome intro song with all these people in cosplay singing at Comiket, and I was like, wow, that is a super funny way to start the movie, and it really got me hyped up to just check out what I thought would be a pretty standard adaptation of the anime and manga. But then, a few minutes later, they broke out into a really cringy and awesome song and dance again, and I was like, whoa, this is actually a musical. This is something I cannot recall ever experiencing in the history of live-action anime adaptations. If I am wrong about that, and you have seen an anime live-action adaptation that is a movie, please let me know, because I want to check it out. But yeah, did it work? Yes, it absolutely worked. I thought the musical element just added so much fun to the film. Film, and the film is totally aware of how cringy it is that it's a musical and just the way they set up the lyrics and the dancing and the scenarios everything just comes together super well it's all just so awkward and the film really doubles down on its own cringiness to deliver these funny wonderful songs that are full of kind of otaku references and terminology all the songs are just really catchy and enjoyable and it really helps to bring the movie together and to give it much broader appeal which is probably part of the reason that it's really taking off in Japan. And in my personal opinion, the Otakoi anime started to wear a little thin in the later episodes. The film does not suffer this problem because the music breaks up the two hour long series of funny jabs at otaku life with these really funny, awesome pieces, and it just keeps everything fresh and moving along at a nice pace. After seeing how well it worked, I would actually love to see more comedy anime that get adapted into a live action film take this kind of musical route, because it was really cool, and I think even after the impact of this movie fades away, people are still gonna be listening to those songs and singing them at karaoke. And while I can't pop any of that sick music in here for obvious reasons, I will drop a link in the description if you wanna check out one of the songs from the film. So the second thing that I thought it did very well was that it was very well focused. A lot of live action anime adaptations, they just try to squeeze so many characters or references in in an attempt to service fans and it just usually just doesn't work at all. And there are just so many bad attempts at fan service that you kind of expect 
all the characters to start stripping halfway through and find out that you're actually watching some cheap knockoff pornographic parody and then suddenly everything makes sense. But sadly, that is not the case. You're just watching a shitty live action anime. You can only do so much with so many characters in a two hour film like this without it feeling really stretched or like all these characters are stuffed in there just so that the film can say like, hey, look at me, I'm Kimetsu no Yaiba. Look at me, I'm Full Metal Alchemist. Look at me, I'm a shitty adaptation of Norwegian Wood and so on. And while it's not like Otokoi is some kind of grand epic that would really suffer with this kind of thing, I was still wondering how they would squeeze the story down into that two hour time frame. And in my opinion, they did it the right way by keeping everything really focused on Narumi and Hirotaka. Hanako and Taro, who are hugely important in the manga, and the four often get together and do lots of stuff, they're largely sidelined to even more supplementary of a role than they are in the manga and anime. And Naoya and Ko, two other important characters, don't even show up in the film. And while that is sad in a way, it does save the movie from feeling way too cramped and everything just being really bad. Hanako and Taro are still in the movie and they contribute enough so that they just don't feel like an afterthought, but I think it really was the correct decision to kind of zero the story in on Narumi and Hirotaka, just keeps everything really focused. And if this pretty nice film keeps putting butts in seats here in Japan, maybe they will put out a sequel and we'll get to see more of those other characters. The third and final thing I wanted to mention that the film does really well and it's somewhat related to the second point, while Otakoi does streamline the character lineup, they really don't go short on the references to otaku culture and to the anime and manga, but it never feels forced and that's the important thing here. For example, they could have went all in and given Hirotaka super blue hair and Narumi super pink hair, but they don't. A lot of other live action adaptations try to do that one-to-one -one 2D to 3D character transition and it looks like garbage, but I was really happy they didn't do that here. Although the promotional materials kind of suggest that they will do this. They didn't try to go one-on-one -on, -one on the hair. Thank goodness you don't have Narumi showing up at a Japanese office with pink hair, something that would pretty much never happen in real life. If they had taken that route, it would have destroyed the certain element of realism that's necessary for this kind of movie to be pulled off well. But they did keep the personalities of the characters intact through their great acting and also the use of some really funny, cringy CG. They've got the anime motion blur, classic Megane character glasses shine, the landmines going off, text boxes that pop up when characters have to make decisions. The way they reference things in the anime and manga and the way they brought in different aspects of otaku culture, it's all right on point. One of my favorite things is how they took some of the conversations between characters and they overlaid it with these Nico Nico Doga style flowing comments. And if you aren't familiar with Nico Nico Doga, it's essentially kind of like a Japanese version of YouTube, but it's very, 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 strongly connected to the otaku culture here. And one of the really distinguishing features of this particular website is how when people are doing live streams, users will type comments and then those comments will actually flow across the screen on top of the live stream. It seems pretty crazy, but people really love it. And it does make interacting with the videos super fun in a different kind of way that you don't see on YouTube. So I thought that was a really nice touch since Nico Nico is such a big part of the otaku culture. Just like everything in the film, it was all like the director, the cast and everyone involved. They were just really focused on writing this love letter to fans of the original manga and anime. And of course, there's all the other more blatant references. They're playing Mario Kart at some times or Monster Hunter or making comments about other games or anime, popping body pillows. It just feels so good watching it. And part of the reason it all feels so natural and wonderful is because just like the original anime and manga, it's not a pure fiction. This is stuff drawn from our real lives as otaku. This is like our lives. We're seeing it on screen. And that's why it is so exciting. And the references just never feel forced. Just mm. Anyways, just like the anime and the manga before it, I do think that while the film is all full of good laughs, there is some important messaging underneath and without spoiling anything, I think they really go a long way in this film to show that, you know, while you don't need to go out screaming on the streets about how big of a Madoka fan you are or whatever, you at the same time shouldn't let society crush you down and make you feel awkward or even ashamed about your hobbies. Because while there are some stigmas attached to being an otaku, honestly, most people really don't care about what you are into. And if you just are upfront about your hobbies, you're just gonna create more opportunities to connect with cool people who think that you're awesome and who love anime or manga or games or whatever. You'll generate more of the right opportunities to connect with the right people. And I know that when I was younger, I was a little bit shy about how I was into anime and games and Polly Pockets, but as you can see, I really don't give a shit about that now. And my life has been all the more fulfilling and all the more filled with the right people because of it. Not to start a long ramble here, that is what I think of the movie adaptation of 
Otakoi. It is very good and I'm not sure what the distribution plan is as far as this movie going overseas, but if you have the chance to check it out, I highly recommend it. It's really funny. You should definitely watch it with your otaku friends and if you have a, an otaku special friend, that would absolutely be the best way to enjoy it. I promise you, you'll have a great time together. Well, are you a big fan of Otakoi? Are you gonna check out this movie? Who's your favorite character from the anime or manga? And have you ever been shy about being into anime or games or whatever? Definitely let me know in the comments, share your experiences, and I'm looking forward to chatting about it.